Welcome to Now Tell Us. We come to hear stories. We come to be educated. We come to be inspired because always we are having great guests with us. When I say that, that means even today we have a great guest with us. And I have some great news. Oh, this is great. This is great. We just became number three at Podmatch. So if you go to Podmatch, now tell us is number three among the hosts top podcast on podmatch yeah help me celebrate that and um, if you're there and you're watching please give us a feedback as we are moving on with this show now at podmatch is where you can listen to more of this podcast and if you want to be interviewed go to podmatch if you want to host a show and you want to get guests go to podmatch now you get a link in the description to just go there and see our show is tops. So <laughs> here we go, we keep going. And the reason that it stops is because of you and me and our guests. And talking of our guests, today we have a great guest that we are going to meet right now. He's known as Jeff Dolan. He's a podcaster, just like I am. And I believe he's got more experience than I do. So I'm going to learn from him and you are going to learn together with me because we are talking about taking podcasting as a business. He is a podcaster, he's a musician, and he's also an, he's also an award-winning filmmaker. Now, what a guest should we have here today? And I won't take one more minute because we should go quickly to meet Jeff Dolan. Here we go. Hello there. Here we go. And here is Jeff. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Hey, Anthony. How are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm doing excellent. I was uh, I, I was watching that studio there, and uh, that looks like a pretty cool place to be. Uh, yes, it's a, it's a dream that I have for my podcast. It, it's not. <laughs> actually, <laughs> it's not actually my studio. That's just part of the intro that I put together from some uh, uh, online content that is usable. So I come here. So that's and use the dream. That's where we, that's where we want to be. If we're going to have a podcast as a business in 2023, we, we want to get to the studio. Sure, definitely. Like the one that we've seen. Now, <laughs> please, can I know, where are you? I'm on the east coast of North Carolina. So mm -hmm. I'm near the beach. That's why you can see some surfboards and snowboards behind me so yeah it's it's always fun to get in the water but at the same time you're wearing a jumper so meaning you're not ready to go to the water right now <laughs> it's a little cold here not right now yeah <laughs> for yeah, us it's probably it's also, like summer for most people in the world <laughs> yeah. it's also cold here where i am i'm in athens greece all the way at the other side of the world and yeah, isn't it cool that we can have a conversation on other sides of the world, live on video, streaming, real time? I mean, technology is so cool. Yeah, it's so cool. And uh, we've watched things change over the years. And uh, I, I'm just curious, where are we going to? And because I've seen such interesting things happen and also some scary things happen. Yeah, there's a lot of fear in the world. There's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, we have a lot of things changing on the content creator landscape, right? We have the mm -hmm. chat GPT, the AI, the bots, all the different technologies that are coming out. Creators are going, their minds are spinning. Everyone's just like, you know, if the machines are going to create all of our art for us, they're going to create all, you know, they're going to be able to match our voices. They're going to create 3d avatars of ourselves and 
we might not even need to be on our own podcast. We just type it up and a, a avatar of our own face just talks for us in our own voice. <laughs> it's somehow scary. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of uncertainty, but I think the, the part that really uh, hits me is that you can never take the human element out of it, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the the heart of it. And so yeah. I think that's where, you know, when you talk about on your website and your show, be the best version of yourself, what does that look like? And it, it definitely involves you loving on other people in, in the way that God's gifted you. Right. And so mm -hmm. I think that's where it all starts. It's what, what do you have to offer to the world? And what is your message? What are you about? And that can be hard to figure out, mm -hmm. but you got to start there. You got to start there. And your, your podcast as a business, uh, that's one of the ways that you can kind of get ideas to see like, where do I want to contribute? Because the reality is, is that most businesses fail, right? And so, mm -hmm. and most of them fail within three to five years. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't want to do the equivalent of that in the podcast world, which is called the pod fade, then you don't want to go out of business. So how do you sustain a podcast where you're talking about a topic or something like that? um, for the long term, how do you sustain that? And it's, you have to find something that you're passionate about that you actually care about. Uh, and, and the audience that you're talking to, you care about them. You care about having these conversations for the long haul. Now that doesn't mean you have to niche yourself down and only talk about one thing. You can brand it around a wide enough topic where you can have different topics, but it helps if your audience, when they engage and they watch your show, they know exactly what they're going to get. And I think that's an important thing. And, and I work for a company wave as CEO, where we help you get those teasers for your podcast out because mm -hmm. the hardest thing is, is like, Hey, come watch my podcast. It's a half an hour long or it's an hour long. It's like, that's a big ask for somebody's time. If they don't know you, they've never heard of you before. And so you want to give them these little teasers of little clips and highlights to say, hey, come check me out. I'm talking about interesting things that can help you. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we want to do. And what we want to encourage you to do is, yeah. you know, have have the have the long form, but also have the short form. And I think that's one of the changes we're seeing in the landscape is really in the content creation game is attention spans are getting shorter and you have to really get to the point and get your message clear and concise in order to get it to the right people so that they even know about you and the longer form content that you're offering. Mm. You've been doing podcast yourself. Tell us about it, please. Yeah. So I, I started a podcast just on my personal filmmaker journey years and years ago. I mean, mm -hmm. gosh, probably, I mean, I don't even want to tell, tell how, how old or how long I've been doing it, but basically um, back then podcasting was much harder, right? There weren't, there weren't services like Podmatch or, uh, there, you know, finding out what kind of mic you use, right. Is it was a, a big topic back in the day because you had the two options back then were like, you can just record it on your computer on this really junky mic, or you could have to, you have to go to some big studio like you had on your intro, right? To go in and really record it. And now they have these great mics where um, they're made for podcasting and you mm -hmm. can uh, really uh, do yourself a favor by getting a mic that is actually one of the big things I learned in podcasting that I'll share is you actually don't want a extremely good mic for podcasting. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is a lot of the musical like musician type of mics pick up a frequency range that's so wide that it's going to pick up every sound in the building, right? Mm -hmm. In the house, every, I mean, if there's someone that's coughing in the next neighborhood over, you're going to hear it, right? I mean, it's just, you hear planes, you hear cars, you hear whatever. And, and so the, you want a mic that has kind of a, a more narrow frequency range just around your voice. Cause typically you're not going to be recording your, your, you know, guitar or your drums or anything with a dynamic range on it. And so mm -hmm. uh, that was a big thing. You you actually want kind of like a cardioid type of mic that doesn't pick up a lot of sound so that you can reduce the amount of noise and distraction that's in your in your 
audio. Mm, that's good to know. Um, because uh, many of us think that a mic is just a mic, so I just take any mic and just give, keep going. <laughs> well, to start, that's how you want to do it. But if you're going to be yeah. a business, you, got, you have to have good audio, right? So you don't mm -hmm. want to start. Uh, I think there's a prevailing uh, wisdom that's out there that's just get started, right? Mm -hmm. Just get mm -hmm. started. Well, I could get started playing basketball, but I'm not going to be a pro basketball player. I'm not going to make money at it, right? But I could get started. I could go down to the local, you know, court and dribble around, but I'm not going to make money from it. So, if you're if you're starting with the mindset of it's going to be a business, there's mm -hmm. a different mindset you have to have and there's a certain level of quality that you're going to want to have to learn and achieve uh, if you're going to expect to earn anything from it, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe, and most probably 2023, Anthony has also a mic close by his mouth to make it clear as Jeff is doing. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, now, I want us to dive right away into what uh, people know a business is about. Now, and this is money. Where does the money from, for a podcast come from? Or, I mean, now we talk of a business. A business is money. Where? From where? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of places that people are making money in podcasting. Mm -hmm. And I think there uh, you could probably get caught up trying to do too many different ones, right? And I think the one that most people think of is putting ads in your podcast, right? Where mm -hmm. it's like, hey, I have a podcast. I'm going to run an audio ad in it. I'm going to charge people to make money from it. But when you don't have a big audience, that's that's hard to do on a mass on on a, at scale, right? It, mm -hmm. It's hard to convince people off the street, hey, come listen to my podcast. The first question they're going to ask you is like, well, how many listeners? How many downloads? And it, and if it doesn't have a lot, then good luck selling ads on your podcast, right? And there there are certain networks. I know that Anchor and several of them have you know monetization. Uh, options where, where once you get a certain number of downloads, you can turn that on. But that's not really where I'm hearing a lot of people make the real money. Where you, where you start, where you can start early making the most money is really niching down and serving a specific community. So uh, for example, if you had, uh, and I, I there's a podcast I just had at a conference with uh, Will Slickers, uh, who is in the hotel hospitality space. <clears throat> and he, I was talking to him and he was saying that he created a podcast for uh, the hospitality industry where he was interviewing the, the top leaders and executives in that field. Mm -hmm. And he actually, before he started the podcast, I believe he said, he got sponsors for the podcast. And they were other hospitality hotels and companies that wanted to have their name next to all these big executives that he was going to interview. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he got thousands of dollars invested up front, almost Kickstarter like where he got investment from all these companies to then go out and do the podcast. And it was a it was a finite season. Right. I think he said he did like nine or ten um, you know, episodes of that. And mm -hmm. so. That's a very niche industry speaking to a very specific set of people about a very specific thing. And so he has to have, you know, you have to have that niche knowledge, but you can also approach it as I'm just trying to learn, but I'm going to extract the knowledge from all these uh, people and put it in a way that's helpful for the audience. And then the brands come in and say, hey, that's valuable content that we don't have to create that you're going to create for us. We will pay for that. Mm -hmm. And then what the brands do is they say, Hey, we sponsored this. We sponsored this creator. We, we uh, are advertising, but it's really content that the brands want to align with. And so you have to think about that from a business standpoint. It's like, what niche do I know enough about that? I could gather the leaders in that industry uh, to speak on certain topics that brands would want to sponsor. So that's a that's a huge way that you can make money when you don't have any real listeners yet, right? You're just mm -hmm. you're just getting that. And then I would say uh, a, a second way that you could think about it is is to if you do have some 
some listeners and some um, you know people downloading your episodes, you can go the traditional route of of selling ads ahead of time, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're saying, hey, I'll, I'll sell a thirty second, a minute spot in my podcast for the next month, right, or the next few episodes. Uh, but I think the hard part about that for a lot of, uh, especially newer podcasters, is you just haven't proven that you can be consistent yet. Mm -hmm. And when you're not consistent, it becomes very difficult if you accept money from any anybody where it's like, okay, where's the episodes? Like, are they coming out? Where's my ads? Right. And then you feel a lot of pressure. And so you have to prove to yourself if you have the business mindset, I am going to be doing this. This is something regular that's happening. Look at all the ones that I've done. You want to have a certain number of them under your belt before you start really having the confidence to sell right to brands. Mm -hmm. So you want to know you have the skill to do it. You have the consistency and you have the ability to then uh, create those, those sales uh, for your podcast. So I would say those, that's where kind of the real money is made. And then uh, of course there's a newer model that's coming out where you're interviewing your potential customers. Okay. So let's say you have already have a business outside of podcasting. You're thinking about getting into podcasting. It's a much better way to sell, to ask your potential target audience or co client or customer uh, to explain their story and mm -hmm. their business and what's going on in their life. Right. So I'll give you an example. If you're a, uh, let's say you're a, I'm just going to make this up. Let, let, let's say you're a, a landscaping company, right? You do landscaping yeah. and you, you cut lawns and you do, you know, uh, bushes and shrubs and things. You might want to start a podcast about local business leaders in your area, in your town, right? That own mm -hmm. big businesses that need your services. And you create a local business podcast in your city or your town and you interview all of them. Well, if you talk about what you do and how you help businesses look good, right? And you do all their landscaping and they were just on your podcast and all their peers were on your podcast, you create a conversation around, wow, maybe I need to consider this guy for landscaping because he seems to be doing good work and I need to look good, you know, in the, in the city. And so it's, and they're going to, promote your show, right? They're on your show. So they're going to be more likely to say, Hey, check out, I was on this podcast. All right. Well, the founder of the podcast owns a landscaping company. Let's check them out. Right. So you're creating an environment where you're getting exposure for your business in a new way, right? In, in, a, in a way that is more authentic and more natural than me trying to just cold call you or, you know, just try to get something from you, right? Like just, Hey, can you just buy my services? Like, I know you don't know me. Well, a podcast creates a conversation where you get to know the person where you get to hear the stories of each other and really figure out if there's a fit there. Plus it creates content for other people to find out about what you're doing and if they want to be a part of it. Right. So whatever business you have, I think a podcast is really a modern day public conversation that you can invite people into your brand, your mission, your purpose, what you're about, how you operate. And it might be something that's not even related to your business, right? It might be that you're saying, hey, I own this landscaping company and my employees are part owners and we all love it. And we're all creating these wonderful lives for each other and um, building this business together. And, and everybody hears that and they say, wow, I don't really care about landscaping, but I love what you're doing with your, with your team. Like, how does that work? How are you doing? Right. And they want to be a part of what you're doing, but how would they know that unless you're on a podcast or, or creating content around it? Right. It, yeah. Nobody would know. So hmm. hopefully those are some good ideas. <laughs> oh, sure. They are good ideas. And um, myself, I've been in podcasting now about two years. I can say I'm, uh, I'm still learning. Uh, I started uh, interviewing authors, that's so I had a, a, that niche. And then I got uh, people interested. And actually, the, the podcast is still there and doing good. It's known as Book Talk at Book Place. And then people started asking me, hey, Anthony, I don't have a book, but I want to be on your podcast. So this is how the, this current one came uh, to be, Now Tell Us. So 
here we welcome people who have stories to tell. Maybe you are, you are selling something or you maybe you just came to chat and highlight a course. So it's wide, it's wide and we learn on the go. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I also have experience uh, in what you've just shared about uh, being on the podcast with someone that ends up to be a business that you had not thought about before when you are going on. It comes up. And tell us. Tell <laughs> us how, how to go. Now, uh, uh, in Now Tell Us, this is where we have met with um, authors. I'm putting together a book where uh, authors are telling their story of how they came to write their book and publish it. So I'm having a an, an guest come on my show who is an author. And uh, we are talking about their book. And I say, oh, yeah, you know, I'm putting together a book where we are talking about publishing. Would you like to be a part of it? And the other said, oh, why not? Now, because we've had a conversation and we we see that we are fit for each other. Although maybe we were talking about something different, but then we end up doing business together. Absolutely. Yep. Mm -hmm. Perfect example. That That's a great way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so I think there's a lot of different ways uh, that you can monetize as well. And if you're I mean, there's different ways, too, if you're a fictional podcast, right? Like maybe you're mm -hmm. a, a true crime or, you know, you're a story type podcast. Um, there's different ways that you can go about uh, doing uh, ads and sponsorships for that. Uh, but I think that gets a little bit harder um, because it's it's fiction and that's a kind of a different market. Uh, it falls in line with more of the audio book market, right? Where mm -hmm. you're trying to sell, you know, a unique audio book or, uh, or even a book <laughs> or a film, right? Um, mm -hmm. I could get into film, right? That's a whole different world. But anytime you're trying to create uh, something of value that somebody wants to consume, there's always the struggle, right, of creators saying, what do I give for free? What do I charge for? Right. There's always that struggle. And in today's world where the way you get attention is to generate that social media content, uh, there's a lot of creators that are struggling with how do I split my time? Right. So mm -hmm. as we look into 2023 and we're trying to determine how much of my time should be spent writing my book, for instance, uh, versus marketing that I'm writing my book or mm -hmm. right. And you should always be in that audience building mindset where it's very tempting, especially authors, intro, you know, if we're introverted and we want to go write uh, or filmmakers, if we want to go write or uh, creators that are you know, musicians, right. We want to go in into our, our studio and create, mm -hmm. there's always this temptation to say, well, I don't need to market until I have my thing done. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my book is done and then I'm going to go market. That's the wrong way to think about it. You actually have to be building your audience before the thing comes out, before your mm -hmm. art is done. You want to be showing I'm working on it. I wrote 200 words today. Mm -hmm. I got this outline done. I spoke at this thing. I was on this podcast talking about it. I was like, you're, you're building the story. And, and that's one of the things I did with, um, my my sci-fi short film that I created was I built a lot of audience anticipation anticipating watching it. Mm -hmm. So there were all sorts of things I was kind of leading up, telling the story about how we created it and uh, who was working on it and what are some of the news items that were tying into it or relevant to it, right? And so mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of audience building that you can do as as a creator even building up to preparing to, to launch your business or launch your art or whatever it is to monetize it. So you're mm -hmm. always in that audience building mode. And I think each person is different uh, depending on the season you're at on how much time you're going to spend in the social media kind of building mode of audience building, mm -hmm. but you can't um, minimize the, the fact that, your sales are going to be directly proportional to the size of your audience and how many mm -hmm. people you can get in front of. And so you actually want to build that first in order to then give them what they want. Now, one of the ways to really do that well that I've seen is you actually build the audience first, 
by asking first doing your work right on what your why is what your purpose is what you have to offer but then when you go out to create content around that for free you're really creating a feedback loop with your audience on what do you want to see like mm-hmm. i see that you liked this you didn't really like when i was doing this but you liked this okay do you want more of this how much of this do you want? How do you like it? Oh, okay, cool. I'm going to write a book about this, or I'm going to do a podcast about this, or I'm going to write, do a film about this, mm-hmm. right? So the thing that your audience tells you, hey, we really like when you did this thing, that's where you go back and you start working on the, the thing you're going to try to monetize, which is usually a bigger uh, piece of art, right? Uh, like mm-hmm. a film or a book, right? So you're building out more or if you're a comedian right you do my special is coming out right it's my hour-long thing instead of my 30 second clip from a show i did Mm -hmm. uh and so as you as you are documenting instead of creating right you're documenting your process your journey you're you're listening to your audience what do they want how can i help them right and Mm -hmm. then you're building your art to then release to them. So you're building up that anticipation and you can do this with businesses. You can do this as artists, but there really is that sense of the conversation that you're having with your audience. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. How are, how are you going to serve them and what they want? The challenge that a lot of artists have specifically is they just go into their studio and create something and then throw it out into the world and hope that, somebody likes it, (laughs) but they usually throw it over the wall to no one because they haven't built an audience. Mm. So there's no one that they're regularly communicating to. They're, they're not talking about anything in the market. And so there's nobody there to catch it. There's nobody there to appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so it is really hard to, um, to create, especially if you're a sensitive artist and you come out with it and you're like, Hey guys, I mean, think about today's culture with, you know, just scrolling. It's like you post your one piece of art you worked for a year on, whether it's your book or your film or whatever. And they just scroll right on by because they don't know you because you didn't create a conversation. You didn't you didn't interest them ahead of time. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you, what has been your biggest challenge, your personal biggest challenge in the podcasting area? Yeah, I think one of the biggest challenges is just i mean audience building is really the one my challenge now right Mm -hmm. i think audience building is is probably the hardest one because you have to really align your kind of what your messaging is and Mm -hmm. find your audience and that can take time and i think a lot of times we want to shortcut it but there really are very few shortcuts to building Mm -hmm. an audience a true audience you might be able to you know, pay for ads and do things like that, or, or, you know, go on bigger shows if you can pull that off and kind of shortcut it a little bit, but it's very hard. You have to build those, those relationships over time. And so you have to have patience on that part of it. And uh, I think that's a challenge for anybody. It's been a challenge for me. It's been a challenge, but I, I do recognize that it goes hand in hand with kind of the entertainment value or, or whatever you're putting out it has to resonate with people. If you're not talking about anything that people want to hear about or you're not entertaining or funny or right, it it becomes very hard. And so I think that's where you have to really be self-aware and look in the mirror and really figure out, like, what am I doing that's different, innovative, entertaining, noteworthy, interesting? Am I getting guests that are talking about interesting things? And so, I mean, that's the challenge for me. It's a challenge for anybody. But if you do that, that inner work and you really focus on how can I bring something different or new or unique to the market, uh, then you will be successful in doing that. Mm. Uh, Do you want to throw out some figures out there in the air for someone who's listening and is wondering what, what, what kind of business can put, I mean, what level can I grow in that business? Do I, go into a being a millionaire do i just uh, survive by do you have any figures that you can give us i mean there's there's all different levels of figures right you can make 
very few dollars or you know you can make millions right and it it really is not something that you should look at as i'm going to get rich you shouldn't even look at it like i'm going to um make make a living at it until you have confirmed that you can make any money at it right and so i think <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with pursuing it as a career one day, but I do think that artists that put the pressure on themselves to generate revenue off of it immediately, um, they're going to be in for a rude awakening. So I don't think it's a wise thing to say uh, in, in any of these kind of uh, artistic endeavors where it really depends on the creative variable in the business, right? Like is the thing audience worthy that's the variable the creative is the variable right it could either be a huge success for you or a huge failure in that you don't create enough people that care about it to to make a business out of it mm. so when you have that kind of creative variable I, i'm very hesitant to recommend anybody just like well i'm gonna do this for my career and i'm gonna quit everything and i'm just gonna go in because it's gonna make a lot of money don't look at it like that have whatever your current income is right now, supplement it with your podcasting business or your art. And once you get good at it and see whether that variable is going to work out in your favor, then you can start monetizing it in a way that it becomes more of your full-time job. Mm -hmm. But it's I, I, I hesitate to tell any creator that, oh yeah, you can make tons of money. Go all in on podcasting. It's going to do like, because there's so much variability in your ability to know whether the creative variable is going to work in your favor. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause there's some, I mean, there's some people that you see online and they start posting something hilarious, right? Mm -hmm. Like they have some kind of funny skit they do, or they have a talk that they do and it goes super viral. Right. Yeah. And all of a sudden overnight they're getting hundreds of thousands, if not millions of new people that are seeing their, their art or whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. And now they have the ability because they have the audience that whatever they start doing more of that thing, they start getting all the calls for, Hey, we want you to do a brand, uh, a branded video of us. You know, we want you to mention us. We want you to sell us. We want you to do a video for our channel, right? So you get all these incoming inquiries. You get agencies calling you. Hey, we want to represent you, right? We want you to be talent. You get mm -hmm. the Joe Rogan type deal where like Spotify is like, hey, will you go exclusive on our network? Mm -hmm. But those are very rare. That's like, you know, the artist that gets signed or that gets found, right? That doesn't really happen too yeah. often. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the variable that I'm talking about. That's a very hard thing to manufacture. And so do the inner work, figure out what you're going to do, but leave room for that creativity and don't put the pressure on yourself to make it a business mm -hmm. right out of the gate because you don't know. Sometimes things get popular and it's just, you had no idea. That was something you were going to do for fun. It was just creative. And then it went viral or something. And now you have this audience. And now talk you can say, okay, <laughs> what? Talk of Kabi Lame of uh, TikTok. You know him? No, no, no. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's the kind of thing that you're talking about. You get viral and people are following you. They are sharing your videos and you're like, whoa. Right. And that mm -hmm. could happen. And and oh, and give yourself the, the opportunity to have that happen mm -hmm. by being in tune with your creativity and what you're offering, right? Like give yourself that opportunity, be on socials, share things, share all the different parts of what you're into and what you care about and the, the funny side of yourself and, and explore that, right? Because I think those kind of things can lead to uh, success in different areas that you never thought possible. Hmm. Well, thank you uh, very much for that. And I'm glad now that my podcast is is starting to attract some eyes somewhere. I've been offered a few, uh, I mean, people have been requesting one or two, although I haven't seen one right one, but I believe 2023 is going to be a different year altogether. Good, good. So we are looking towards it. Okay, now um, tell us a bit more of how you work with podcasters. You just told us about the clips they shot and 
how do you, uh, if like now we've been here with Anthony on his podcast, and how do you start the business? You're supporting the podcast. How do you work with him? Yeah, so there's there's uh, a lot of agencies that work with uh, Wave, uh, and and Wave is a tool that helps podcasters and agents clip their audio to create mm -hmm. video for social media. Mm -hmm. So. Now this podcast has video, right? So you can clip a nice video clip, but a lot of podcasters start off and it's just audio, right? Okay. And so if it's just audio and you don't want to be a video editor and you don't want to, right, be spending all this time trying to create all this content for social media to advertise your show, you can use Wave to create a nice animated video that matches your voice. So there's like a waveform, you can do captions, right? Put a nice picture of yourself or the cover of your uh, podcast. And then we'll create a video for you so you can share it on social media. So it's a way to create easy social media content uh, without a lot of work, right? You don't want to spend a lot of time editing video and trying to do all this stuff. So agencies use it. That's another way to monetize. Quick tip at the end, you know, you could use a tool like Wave to create the marketing assets for other podcasters, right? Mm -hmm. Other YouTubers. So okay. you're the one actually creating the social media content and posting it to social media sites for somebody and you can mm -hmm. make money that way. So that's kind of a services business, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of different ways to make money at it. But yeah, that's what Wave does. We help, we help podcasters, audio creators, musicians, audiobook authors, right? If you want to market your show, take a clip of your book, put it out there. A lot of authors don't want to be on camera, right? <laughs> and so it's a good tool for those that don't want to be on camera. So is it a DIY? Do you it just... is. It's do it yourself. Yep. You just log into the app. It's like three steps. You load your audio. Mm -hmm. uh, you pick your clip out. You uh, design your, your cover. Or you can use one of our quick templates to just throw your uh, podcast cover on there. And okay. then you pick your waveform and you're good to go. We create. We give you all the videos to put out however you want. Ah, that's good. We should go use it. Yeah. Yeah. Email me, uh, jeff at wave.co and yeah. uh, I'll, I'll make sure to give you a, a discount if you want to do a paid plan. We do have a free plan though. You can use the free plan as well. Okay. Oh, we'll, we'll have a look at it. And all those who are listening, I believe those who are into podcasting, we will go and have a look at it. So, this is just about it. Um, we have shared much, and I know we've so so much more that we could uh, have uh, had in this short episode. So I would ask people to follow up with you and learn more from you. Uh, how can they get to connect with you? Yeah, so you can go uh, contact me. Uh, I'm on all the social medias as Jeff Dolan. So just search Jeff Dolan on any of the platforms, and I'll I'll probably have an account on there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, you can check out wave at wave.co, W A V V E dot C O. And mm -hmm. so we'd love to uh, have you and, and have you as a creator on our platform. I do put out weekly uh, articles and podcasts on how to uh, do the content creation game. And so if you're into podcasting, content creation, all that, uh, I try to educate every week uh, with a podcast and a blog. So definitely join us over at wave.co. Okay, so go to www.wave.co and connect with Jeff for more about podcasting as a business. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jeff. We really appreciate you taking your time and being with us here on Now Tell Us. So we are just about to go, but before we go, we'll ask you to leave us with a few words that we should always remember. Whatever they may be, we are ready to hear it. Yeah, well, I want to echo what you say a lot, Anthony, which is be the ve be the best version of yourself. And mm -hmm. if you ask yourself every day, am I showing up as the best version of myself? You're going to make much wiser decisions. Mm, thank you very much. Wow, be the best version of yourself. So to every listener or every viewer out there, we really appreciate you also watching us. Go and be the best version of yourself. Say, it's Jeff who said that. <laughs> oh, yes. And uh, so that's about it for today. 
thank you, thank you very much, Jeff, for your time. And uh, I've been your host, Anthony Moirore. And together with Jeff, we are saying bye for now.